I'm Mark Rice of Cutter Networks, and I'd like to speak with you briefly today about the Optimux 125, or OP125, as it's generally abbreviated. What's an OP125? Where do we use it? What does it do? What does it look like? We'll take a closer look at one in just a few minutes, but first let's just talk about conceptually what it does. If you have T1s at one location, let's say you have uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, as many as 16 T1s, that you need to move the DMARC from one location to another uh, over fiber, the Optimux 125 is a great way to do that. It handles up to 16 T1s, it uses SFPs, and will extend your T1s over that fiber in a point-to-point -point application. It also has an option for Ethernet. Uh, that's an, a licensing option, you don't have to have it, uh, but if you want to get 100 megs across there, in addition to your T1s, you can do that. It's a very solid little product. Let's take a closer look at the Optimux 125, or OP125, as it's generally abbreviated. On the front of the unit, we have 16 T1 ports. To the right of that, we have two SFP slots where your fiber connections will be. Now, there's two of them so that you can have a primary and a redundant uh, fiber link. If you only have a single fiber path, of course, you're only going to be using the first port. The advantage to SFPs is that if you initially use it in, let's say, a short reach application and then at a later date want to use it in a long reach application, it's only a matter of changing the SFPs. Now, to the right of that, you'll see that we have an Ethernet management port and we also have an a, uh, Ethernet user port, which we'll talk some more about in just a minute. To the right of that, you have a control port, and above it you see a spot where an alarm port would be. This particular model doesn't have it, but in the event that you wanted to have dry contacts triggering, let's say, a light or some other device, uh, that's an option ordering option. Now, this particular unit is equipped with two power supplies. These power supplies will operate at anywhere from 100, uh, 100 volts to 240 volts AC, or they can operate at 48 or 60 volts DC. Uh, so you might say, well, how in the world am I going to make a DC connection to that? Well, the answer is simple. It comes with a little adapter, uh, and there's instructions in the manual on how you'll put your DC wires into this adapter and connect them uh, for use to the same power supply. Now, I said a minute ago, I want to talk some more about this uh, user port, this Ethernet user port. Normally, this particular unit is, is used most commonly for T1s. However, if you have Ethernet traffic you want to move in addition to your T1s, you can certainly do that. It's a licensing option. The port is always there, uh, but depending upon which license you have for it, this port can operate at 6 or 8 or 100 megs, depending upon, once again, I said the, the option. Uh, you can purchase it at the same time as you buy the equipment, or you can buy it at a later date. Uh, the Optimux 125 does not have uh, any fans in it. There's nothing to fail. Uh, I shouldn't say nothing to fail. There is no fan to fail. Uh, there's ventilations in the side, ventilation holes. Uh, there's nothing on the back of the unit. It's perfectly smooth. It's a very solid, very reliable piece of equipment. And, and now you can say you've seen one up close. Optimux 125. Okay, well, you have you've seen the Optimux 125 up close. You know what it does. If you think that you might have an application for it or you want to discuss it, give me a call. I'm at 727-398-5252. My name is Mark Rice, and I look forward to speaking with you. I hope you have a wonderful day.